the first couple of demos we did just it felt a bit artificial like we were trying to be a folk band and what is the oldest song on the album shadow bed what, what is the oldest song shaker hymns is the oldest song the, the very acoustic song on the record when did you write this this song when i first went to university when i was 19 i wrote that song and every other song from that period that I've written has long since disappeared. But what makes the song for you stand out to what even to record it after all these years? Well, that was the thing. We carried on playing it. People seemed to enjoy it and it became apparent in the set. It was nice to have a moment where we didn't, you know, like initially Dry the River was going to be very folk. I, it was something I wanted to try. And I said to the guys, we're going to make a very, you know, this is going to be a real folk band. Even though I was using musicians I'd known from hardcore bands, I was saying to John, don't play so hard. Let's try and be a bit quieter and softer. Telling everybody, let's don't shout and let's turn the amps down and try and do something. But it just didn't feel, the first couple of demos we did, just it felt a bit artificial, like we were trying to be a folk band and none of us came from folk backgrounds and it didn't feel so sincere. So when we start, naturally, we kind of started to play the songs. They began as folk songs and we started to play them a bit heavier and give it a bit more intensity live. People seemed to respond really well, but we just suddenly felt, OK, we're much more comfortable now. This makes much more sense. Personally, we should just allow our musical heritage to come through. It doesn't mean we have to be a hardcore band. We can be a hardcore band that plays folk songs. And that's kind of where we ended up. And that's kind of, I think, what separated us from... Mumford and Sons or Noah and the Whale or Johnny Flynn or other people we've toured with who are our contemporaries and who we've, you know, live in the same part of London and, you know, and that's cool, but we felt like we'd come to folk music through hardcore music and that, that kind of gave us a different edge to our music. Um, but then after a while it felt like even though the heavier stuff was really fun, it was important to still still have that aspect where we allowed ourselves occasionally to be a bit more acoustic and you know it was nice to have both sides in the set to have some really intense heavy stuff and some very stripped down acoustic stuff and so Shaker Hymns was always a track it just didn't seem to age that as like the rest of the music it seemed I still kind of liked it as a song. What's the song about? It's actually I guess it's one of the songs that the few songs in the record that isn't really, it's just narrative, it isn't really a personal song. Again, it's about this thing of community and family and obligation, personal obligations and commitments and stuff, but it's more of a kind of, it's quite fictional, whereas as I've gone on as a songwriter, I've fed more of myself into the, my personal experiences, into the music a lot more. Um, but that took me a while to be kind of brave enough to do that and just to be able to do it with any kind of success it took me a long time. What that is the song's last much more fictional. What's the last song you wrote for this album? Shield Your Eyes was written while we were in the studio. Uh, it's quite kind of obscure with some of the language. It's quite kind of biblical and a bit kind of, you know, the true meaning's quite obscure, but it is about a very personal thing, a very personal, like, relationship I was in um, that was really riddled with a lot of obstacles. It was a very difficult relationship, not on a personal level, but on a practical level. It was while we were doing a lot of music, a lot of touring, there were just so many obstacles, and that song was kind of about the fact that the relationship was... It was defined by the obstacles, but that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. Like, for me, the relationship was because of the obstacles, and that was kind of cool. Like, so that was me trying to articulate that in a song. In the end, the relationship did collapse, you know, whatever, but, uh, you know, that song is about kind of like, there are these various obstacles, but it's fine, like, you know. And if you compare these two songs? What they're quite different in a lot of ways. There's um, a key change in a certain part of the Shield Your Eyes. There are lots of bars, like, musically, there are some bars of seven, you know, there's bars where we drop a beat and stuff. It's a little bit, it's subtle, there's no, like, really complex technical stuff crowbarred in there for the sake of it but there are bits where naturally you know I've just had a slightly I think more a better grasp of music by that point and so there are slightly more interesting chord sequences uh, lyrics are maybe a little bit more adept um, and yeah the time signatures and stuff there are natural places where the time signature shifts around it was not a conscious effort to be more technical it was just something we kind of developed over time and 
you know, and listening to the two, I think there is a difference. Not that one is better than the other, but one is maybe more proficient musically than the other. Um, and there is a progression, but I like that there's the difference on the record. And to me, it's a collection of songs charting, going from being a, you know, very kind of basic songwriter, just figuring out the, the, the rudiments of writing music to hopefully going towards you know, a slightly more mature sound. And you know, I like that we have one record that catalogues everything Dry the River have ever done, more or less. You know, all of our songs to date, it's nice for a first record to feel like, and now I really feel like starting to write new stuff. I have a completely blank slate and I can be like, right, you know, now I'm gonna start to write, you know, taking on board everything that's come in the past, which is kind of cool.